Welcome to another thrilling episode of What's Up in the City, the show that usually talks about all the police activities in Bella Vista. But today we're honored to have the Bella Vista fire chief here, Steve Sims, and he's going to talk about the fire department activities in and around Bella Vista. And Steve, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mel. It's been a long time. Been a long and time, yes, sir. He's just filled with good information, and I know you'll want to get your pencils and paper so you can write down some of this information. Because if, you, if you're Steve's age, you won't remember everything. <laughs> you see. Uh, Mel. Like I do. But anyhow, welcome again to the program. Oh, thank you. And one of the things that Steve has chosen to speak about today is the new fire station and a training program that's going to be a benefit here and around Bella Vista. That's right. All right, Steve, so I'll kind of turn it over to you. Okay. Just to remind everybody that the um, fire, or the city um, is building a new fire station, will mm -hmm. be building a new fire station. It's actually in the process right now, um, some of the grading sites being done currently. Um, it's going to be located at the easiest way to say it, it's going to be located at the um, corner, or I'll say the corner, it's going to be off of Highway 279, right across the street from Sherlock Drive, right behind El Poblito's. They're already, they're already um, grading um, out the site right now. Um, the city is doing that currently because of the work we had to do at the cell phone tower. There is a cell phone tower going behind there that actually is going to be in conjunction with the church. It's building to the north of us. They are, um, they are. We had to work some some cost sharing agreement with the with the Smith uh, Two Way Incorporation mm -hmm. or LLC um, to get some of that um, project done and started right away. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a great benefit to the city. We are um, part of the reason why that station is located there is when you look at a fire station location within a geographical area, you, you look at several things. You look at residents covered and you look at miles, or square, say not square miles, but road miles around that fire station. Mm -hmm. And also the roads, the major roads that, that feed that fire station or that fire station feeds from, like Highway 279. You got the Sherlock Drive that goes back down to Glasgow. You got Highlands Boulevard that takes around the other side of the lake. Currently, with our fire station on the west side, the, um, with the fire station on the west side over there, is that fire station has come, that fire truck and ambulance has come all the way around the lake to get to the other side of the lake currently mm -hmm. to service the people that are off of Highlands Boulevard in that mm -hmm. area. Um, so it'll be a great benefit for getting a quicker response for fire and ambulance mm -hmm. to people that live on that side of the lake and to other ones that live on the back side of Chelsea, mm -hmm. ones that live north on 279, ones that live back east off of Highway 340. So that area gives you all those main roads. You know, you got mm -hmm. Cannon Road just down the, down the way. You got Colin Hills Drive. Right. You got several. You got Cooper down there. You got several main arteries that feed that area, that location, that mm -hmm. fire station. That's one reason why we picked that location in that general area is that way we can get a fire truck out quick out out on the road, and they can either go right or left and, and hit those major major mm -hmm. um, roads to get down to the place mm -hmm. they need to. to to provide for one a faster and most efficient response time to the residents, whether it's a fire emergency or an ambulance emergency. Mm -hmm. On that. Yeah, sometimes people forget that not only are you, are you a fire department, but you're an emergency department as well. That's correct. The fire department currently runs, runs the ambulance service in Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. And um, right now we're just a little over 2,500 calls so far this year for oh EMS goodness. and fire, fire call. I think we're a little over 1,800 calls on Almost 1,900 calls on the EMS side currently this year, and that's more and than last year. Isn't that it? is that is more than last year. We're up quite a bit on our on our calls, probably about 20 percent or so mm -hmm. on our call volume. Um, the fire stations kind of tell you a little bit about the fire station, um, how it's going to be laid out, and you know, kind of the way it's going to look. It's um, it's going to be right at around 9,200 square feet. That's total square feet. That's total living and apparatus housing, apparatus bay housing. It um, it's going to it's going to be built to man six firefighter EMTs or paramedics. Okay, we will have paramedics there because we'll be running ambulances out of there. It's going to have three apparatus bays and one wash bay that will also serve as apparatus bays as well. We'll actually store equipment in there to keep it out of the, out of the weather. But what the wash bay is, it's a separate area where you can pull your vehicles into and then wash them. All your drainage goes into a, in a approved 
drainage area that goes through a filter, sand filter, and goes into the into the sewer. That mm -hmm. way, it kind of gets all the impurities out of there that might cause a problem in streams and so forth. Well, Steve, one of the things that I know that people, uh, probably a lot of people here in Bella Vista aren't aware of, is that when you talk about living quarters, mm -hmm. is that they they think this guy just goes there to work for eight, eight hours and it's over. No, but, here uh, here in Bella Vista, and it's been like this for um, for many many years. Um, when the guys go to work there, they go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning and they return or they leave at 8 o'clock the next morning. They work 24 hour shifts. They sleep there. So if a call comes in at 3 o'clock in the morning, they get up out of bed, they rise up out of sleep, get in, go out to the apparatus bay and either get in a fire truck or ambulance, depending on which one's summoned, and then they, they go on, on the call. They're there 24 hours. We keep, we're, we're a full time, full staff professional fire department yeah. that have people there all the time. And you got living quarters right there for the That's employees. Correct. They have living quarters, they have you know a place where they can prepare their food mm -hmm. and eat, they have a dining area, they have a have a day room where they can lounge and sit, rest until the until the next call comes in if they're not out doing training or any other um, purpose for the fire department mm -hmm. or ambulance. Um, the fire station is also going to serve as a as a city's secondary emergency operations center. There'll be a room on, on it in, in the building that will actually be set up to where we can have, um, have um, um, internet services, um, phone services, you know, tied in that one area. That, that way, if, if the town center is affected, because that's our primary EOC, if the town center area location is affected by any type of event, we can move our emergency operations center to mm. This fire station and operate our our um, scene or uh, our mission or our focus from that area. Mm -hmm. It's going to have that. Um, it's also going to have a safe room built in part of the fire station for the personnel there um, or anybody else that might stop by there seeking shelter from the storm. It's going to have an area in there that will also be um, provide that protection as well to the to the firemen and whoever else might happen to be coming by there swinging there to, for safety mm -hmm. on that. Well, it's nice to know that would be available, you know, if I'm in my car and that emergency occurs. Mm -hmm. And if they happen to pull in there, like a storm's coming in, they happen to pull in, there's that, there'll be that safe area for them to Excellent. shelter as well. Excellent. It's been a long time. This has been in, it's been in the talk for many, many years here in Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. You know, back when I built the east side fire station, that actually was, they were looking at building both the west side and the east side fire station at the same time. but funding and so forth wasn't available, so they chose the east side instead to build mm -hmm. that fire station. The um, west side, probably a little bit more you know, populated, a little bit more, <coughs> the response is a little further out, the response is a little busier in that area. Um, I'm glad to see this fire station coming to cut those response times down and add, and add that additional protection to those that live around the Highlands area and the central part of, of Bella Vista. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time, it's been talked about for Many years, I'm just glad to see it, you know, coming to mm -hmm. coming together and and I'm being being able to be built. Well, you know, residents have often asked me. They said, "Well, you know, you got the fire department down at the town center, and you got one way out on the west and one way out on the east. And uh, what happens if you know <clears throat> the one out on the west needs the one from the east and the one downtown? But what happens to the people yeah. in the middle?" Yeah, a lot of a lot of times we hear that that same thing you're talking about. Well, I've already got a fire station over on the east side. You know, we don't need a fire station on the west side because I've got one over here. Yeah. What I don't think people realize that you know, being a small department like this, when we when we get busy and it's happening more and more frequently, where we get more and more calls that are happening at the same time, we're getting more stations that are out at the same time, mm -hmm. and it takes all the resources away. Whenever we have a fire in the Highlands area, that's only two people out there. Two people can't fight a fire. Mm -hmm. or, or if we have a major incident, it could be a, a motor vehicle accident or whatever. Then town center leaves their post and goes out to the Highlands to help them, which leaves the central part uncovered. Mm -hmm. So what happens there is the east side fire station where people say, I've got a fire station out here. That east side fire station moves to central because central is the busiest Mm -hmm. area of our of our response is essential so we want to make sure we can get an ambulance and a fire truck close to the busiest area mm -hmm. okay so that so the people on the east side have let, have lost their fire station now the east side fire station is covering the central west and the east mm -hmm. so that's only maybe two two to three people oh yeah maybe two at the most maybe 
maybe um, or two at the least, maybe three at the most as of right now. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't realize that they, they transition like that. Same thing with the west side. I got this fire station, central fire station, east, east fire station out on a call. West comes and covers central because this is our busiest. I want to get the ambulance and the fire truck to the closest mm -hmm. area, the busiest area. That way we can provide the quickest response. Mm -hmm. So with that fourth fire station, it's going to help us eliminate a lot of times moving from point A to point B when I've got this additional manpower and staffing and equipment here to be able to offset some of these calls. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'd, I don't think a lot of the people really realize, too, also when there's a, an auto accident involved here that the fire department is part of that scene as well. That's correct. Many times. That's correct. If the fire department runs the, the fire and rescue and ambulance. Mm -hmm. So if there's a motor vehicle accident with somebody trapped in a vehicle, then it requires a rescue truck from the fire department, personnel from the fire department, and an ambulance, and a sometimes a ladder truck, and sometimes you know a shift commander mm -hmm. on that scene. So it takes all those personnel, especially if you have somebody trapped, takes all those personnel to be able to handle that call in mm -hmm. that situation. Mm -hmm. So that, the say to say that is, that fire station is gonna be a great benefit to provide adding, because it's adding additional staffing to Bella Vista, which is adding nine more members to the fire department, mm -hmm. to be able to help maneuver some of these vehicles around to be able to give the best and most adequate protection Service. we can within the city. Yes. yes, and that's excellent to keep our village excellent. That's right. And hopefully, we'll um, bring in the, the insurance rating company, which some, some insurance companies use it, some, some don't. But maybe we can lower what they call the ISO rating, mm -hmm. which may in turn, not to say it will, but may in turn lower some property insurances based off your distance from the fire station. Yes, so. yes, I've heard people talk yeah. about that. Yes. I mean, it's a possibility, not to say it could or would happen, because <coughs> some, there's some insurance companies out there that don't use that that service, but mm -hmm. there's a lot of them that still use that service. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, it's good to know that uh, <clears throat> people here in the village have thought far enough ahead of time that they're providing this kind of service. Mm -hmm. Because I know the village, I moved here 24 years ago, <clears throat> and it's changed quite a bit. It has changed quite a Not bit. Not only in the homes, but mm -hmm. in the number of residents who live here. That's and right. would require the service. That's right. I'll tell you what, a lot of a lot of the fourth fire station being built are coming to to reality, I guess you say of being built, um, has a lot of factors in there. You know, for one thing we they passed the sales tax, you know, which added additional firemen. Um, they passed the uh, millage increase, the, the taxpayers, mm -hmm. they passed the millage increase, which allowed funding to be allocated from the the um, current a retirement system, Lafayette, Lafayette retirement system, it allowed that money to come in, you know, the, the millage took care of that, to free up some of the money to hire the additional nine personnel mm, excellent. to cover the station. So a lot of that, a lot of, you know, the all the taxpayers here are a lot of the ones that made this happen. Mm -hmm. They made this, they made it, the funding available to hire the additional personnel to be able to staff a fire station. The building really isn't that big of an issue to get it built. It's staffing the personnel and keeping those personnel on, on, mm -hmm. you know, on mm -hmm. staff. It, it takes the money to do that to keep the firemen here. Yeah, so, and sometimes so when, thank there's, you. when there's a current issue about millage or taxes, mm -hmm. you need to really keep in mind what's going to be the end benefit of that. That's right. Yes. That's right. You know, and that was, uh, you know, the, the CHIPS group that was out there, the citizens to help improve public safety, they're out, you know, you know, talking to different groups and stuff, saying this is how important it is. With mm -hmm. that and with that millage increase passing was was the way we were able to fund mm -hmm. the um, additional fire Excellent. The station. Excellent. Well, <clears throat> we're saying to the people that you can probably sleep a little easier, breathe a little bit better, and uh, if they need assistance, it's gonna be closer. Mm -hmm. That's right. You bet. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and I know a lot of people, you know, especially ones been here for many years have have um, asked about this, have wondered why, you know, where's the new fire station? How come we don't have a fire station out here? You know, they go back and remember the calls that, hey, it took a fire fire truck 10 or 15 minutes to get to this house and it burnt to the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully we can, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of a lot of that by adding that fire station there to get that fire truck and ambulance out to a quicker response. Excellent. Quicker, you know, get them to the, 
to the um, ones that are that are footing that bill's house quicker. Mm -hmm. um, and Steve, just just mention one bit, and that's about the different colors in the fire plugs, because mm -hmm. I think that's really important for people to know. Yeah, we get a lot of um, colors. A lot of people call and ask questions about, you know, what does this fire plug mean? I got this fire plug that's red on top, or I got this fire plug that's orange on top, or green, or blue, or whatever, or vice versa, or it may be all red. Um, or it may be all black. If it's all black, we know that that hydrant's out of service. Uh, mm -hmm. A hydrant that has not got water on it, and you see a lot of those that are on dead end lines or on lines that are away from anything that's being built. You know, you may have have um, housing built up to a point and they may have shut the line off to keep it from leaking out anywhere else that, that there's no property. So if it's black, if you see one that's black or purplish, then that is a hydrant that is out of service. Okay. If you see one that is silver with a red top on it, that's probably the lowest pressure hydrant we have, and that's going to be anything that's going to produce 500, 500 gallons per minute or less. Mm -hmm. okay. If you see one that's orange, that means it's 500 gallons up to about um, 999 gallons per minute. If you see one that's green, it's up to not, it's going to be 1,000 to 1,499 or so. Mm -hmm. And if you see one that's blue, that means it's over 1,500 gallons a minute. Excellent. So those are, in, and we use those. A lot of times we pull up on a fire, we look at that hydrant and say, what are we available to flow? And what, what that hydrant's going to tell us is how many lines with friction loss and so forth, how many lines I can use without depleting the complete water source out of that hydrant and causing a problem in the water line. Okay, excellent, excellent. Because a number of people have asked me, you know, why do we have red ones and green ones? That's right. If you see one that's all the way red, um, some of those were painted years ago. They were all completely red. The whole barrel, bonnet, and everything, and, and the outlets are all painted red. And you'll see a few of those around until they get painted. Those hydrants are, if you look at the very top of the stem where you turn the hydrant on, it'd be color, it'll be um, painted that, it'll be painted that orange, green, or blue. And on the caps, on the very end of the caps, where you take the caps off, mm -hmm. they would also be painted that color coding. Oh, so okay. back years ago, they were painted that way because a lot of times private hydrants are painted completely red. Mm -hmm. so. well, <clears throat> that would then indicate to me that if I were a fireman, I went out and the fire was close to a plug that did not have as much pressure, that I might need to have a fire, a water truck or uh, a longer hose. Yeah, we um, a lot of that stuff is already predetermined. Our dispatch CAD mm -hmm. that if we get if we get to an area where there's low pressure or no pressure at all, then we we um, notify the closest water tanks or water tenders mm -hmm. to that area. We go ahead and pre-notify them and have oh, them dispatched okay. and route to that 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 oh, area. Excellent, excellent. Or if we have a hydrant like a like a main break, let's say we have mm -hmm. a water main break, then we automatically know that if there's water main break and we have a fire within that general area, then we notify the tenders to come to that area to help us. If okay. We need to. Excellent, excellent. All right, what else do you want to share? Well, I would like to talk a little bit about the, um, the new program, the new paramedic program we have coming up, um, our pilot program that we're um, working together with Mercy Medical S um, Systems on. Mm -hmm. uh, we feel like it's going to be a great asset to the to the department, to the citizens here in Bella Vista. Um, the program is a one-year pilot program. It was kind of really initiated by um, the fire department's been kind of thinking about this for quite some time. We, um, um, one of our former um, firefighter paramedics, him and I have been talking about it, you know, right after I took chief. There are a few programs throughout the United States currently. We've been talking about it for quite some time and trying to figure out a way that how can we get that same program that's going on throughout the United States here in Bella Vista? Mm -hmm. You know, we feel like Bella Vista being community oriented, you know, with the community base out there we have, um, not a whole lot of um, commercial in here. We got a lot of residents here. We felt like in a lot of patients we see on the ambulance and so forth, mm -hmm. we felt like that Bella Vista was the ideal place to start a community type paramedic program. Oh, okay. By utilizing um, utilizing the paramedics, you know, especially trained paramedics on the fire department or on, on the ambulance side, you know, mm -hmm. fire and ambulance. Using um, five of those guys that are trained, um, uh, especially trained to handle this type of care mm -hmm. um, out in the community. The, um, How does that work then? Uh, 
uh, you use your people to do the training? Yes, our, our people, the, the do the training, the training was actually done through the University of Arkansas Medical Sciences, okay, mm -hmm. out of Little Rock. It was a satellite training that was done. I had five um, paramedics that were trained in it. The paramedic, the, the program was paid for by um, Mercy, mm -hmm. the Mercy Foundation, okay? It was a grant through the Mercy Foundation, which was around $12,000, I believe, to train the paramedics. So they were trained. They're ready to go. Um, we got them trained. They're ready to go. We're just now finalizing the um, final steps with Mercy to be able to get the program up and running. Um, the idea behind the program is to fill the gap for high-risk patients between discharge and arrival of home health care. Okay, and sometimes that takes anywhere from 24 to 72 hours before home health care gets inside the home. Mm -hmm. What we're mm -hmm. trying to eliminate or what we're trying to, to keep from happening is when those, those patients, those high-risk patients, which I believe we're gonna, we're gonna be looking at cardiac patients, whenever they get into the home from discharge from the hospital and they get in the home, we're gonna step in there and make sure that they understand their discharge paperwork, okay, that their discharge paperwork, there's no problems with it. They got their medications filled, okay? Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, a lot of people when they get home, they forget to get their medications or they drop it off and they get home, get comfortable and don't go back and get their medications. Um, make sure that's done. That is to eliminate any additional or premature calls to 911 for an ambulance to come out because they're having pain or okay. they're having something going on or they don't understand their discharge instructions. They're, um, they're excited, they're anxious. You, when you get anxious, a lot of times you pick up the phone, who do you call? You call the fire and ambulance mm -hmm. to come out and, and take care of you. So those are some of the things we're trying to, to um, eliminate from happening. And what happens is we take our, our ambulance, it, we take our, our personnel, mm -hmm. we take the ambulance and we drive it out to their house, which burns fuel out there, to check on them whenever, hopefully we can eliminate that by sending in the community paramedic, talking to them, making sure they have all that in place so they don't, they got everything that they need so they don't call the ambulance back. Okay. The other thing is, is one thing we're focusing on being you know fire-based um, ambulance service and fire-based, is we're looking on, um, we're looking at, you know, fire prevention in the home. We have a safety checklist we're going to be doing for each one of those, those patients we go on. If they, if they pick us to go on in there, we're going to be doing fire, fire inspections in the home and also fall prevention inspections. Because okay. a lot of our calls we go on, Milt, believe it or not, are fall injuries. April fall. Or somebody's tripped over something that, you know, a rug or a cord or something they have in the floor that they, they really don't need there. They trip mm -hmm. over it and then they end up breaking their hip. And a mm -hmm. hip fracture is not very good. You know, it takes a lot of rehab, takes oh, surgery, sure. rehab, and so forth. Oh, well, will you get involved in having these alert things that if, if a person falls, they just push a button? And we see a lot of those types of calls. We see a lot of um, um, where somebody has fallen, they push their alert button. That's how we're notified a lot of times. Okay. And I recommend anybody that has unstable gait or gets dizzy when they stand up and so forth, or if they live alone or whatever, is to get one of those, is to get a fall risk prevention that they can okay. hook up, you know, and push the button when they fall. Mm -hmm. That way it, it notifies the authorities. Now does the police, or the fire department offer that? We don't offer it, yeah. but there's numerous places out there, hospitals you and stuff has it. that you can get the um, fall, fall risk prevention yes. notifications that that um, if you fall and you can't get up, you push the button. Yeah. Because there's been a lot of people here in Bella Vista that have laid in the floor for many days mm -hmm. before somebody realized or knew that they had fallen. Oh, and wow. could have been eliminated if they had some sort of button yes. push to notify authorities. Well, now, will that tie in with the lockbox that the fire department makes arrangements for? It could. If they had, if they had the um, lockbox, let's say they had a lockbox on their house, and let's say that they had fallen and their door's locked, then... In our dispatch CAD, if they have that on their house and they have the fall, if they have the fall button they push when they fall, if we respond on scene, the dispatch is going to tell us they have a lockbox. Mm -hmm. And that lockbox, the fire department only has a key to it. It's hooked up into a device on, our, on each unit that we have to push in a code, get the key out. We can go up there and unlock the lockbox, get their key out of their house, and open their door and go in and take care of them without breaking to... any doors or windows or anything like that, oh, causing any further wonderful. damage. Well, you know, if we got some viewers out there who have parents who are at that stage, whether they live here or whether they live in another city, those are two important things to consider. That's right. 
It is. Yeah. It, it is very important. We we um, we recommend that at the fire department. It's a it's a cheap investment to be able to you know to to minimize any any further damage or cost mm -hmm. to your home. Um, it has worked well within the city. We have had a lot of good response with it. Um, we use it quite a bit. You know, we mm -hmm. get a you know we'll get a call and they'll say they'll have a lot box on their front door and we use it. We use it all the time. It's been great. We probably have a little over probably around 300 or so that are wow. placed throughout the city mm -hmm. currently. And it has been, I mean, it's been a, a great program for that. Mm -hmm. I recommend anybody that that has a, needs additional assistance or lives alone or, or actually anybody should have one in their home. Yes, yes. Steve, aside from that, and we'll get back to that, I just thought of a question that somebody asked me the other day, and he said, I know I've got fire alarms in my house. Mm -hmm. My husband passed away. How often should I be worrying about the fire alarms in my house? And is there a, a regular time when you should change the batteries no matter what? We, um, we always refer back to the time change. Mm -hmm. if you, when you fall back or spring forward, that's when you should be checking your, you know, changing your batteries out in your smoke detectors or your CO detectors. Um, we recommend a monthly push of the button if you can reach it. Mm -hmm. Just push the button in, hold it in, and make sure your smoke detectors alarm. Okay. Hey, if they don't or if they beep or something like that, you have, have issues with it, don't hesitate to call the fire department. We'll send somebody out to look at them. We'll look at them and see when they're manufactured. A lot of times they, they recommend replacement after 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, if you have one over 10 years old, then it's, it probably needs to be replaced. Okay. But we will, I mean, it's a service, but that's one thing we can't stress enough is having smoke detectors for one and CO detectors if you burn any type of fuel and checking the batteries or changing the batteries out twice a year. Okay, yeah. and if, you've, if you use a cane or you got a cane at home or you can't find the broom handle, use that to push the button rather than that's have right. to worry about going out and getting a ladder or getting up on a chair yeah. to reach it. Yep, and that's right. And if you have any problems at all or can't reach it or don't feel like you can do it yourself, please do not hesitate to call the fire department. Mm -hmm. We'll send somebody out to help you. That's part of our job. We're public servants here. You're our, you're our customer. We'll take care of you the best way we can. Excellent, excellent. Now, did you want to add anything in addition to the emergency training that you're talking about, um, just, working with the Mercy? You know, just, um, yeah, the, I think it's going to be a great program, Milt. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, if we can, you know, I've always said this all along, if I could get in, into 100 homes or 200 homes, a year and provide a fire safety inspection or a uh, fall prevention inspection form or make sure the pay or the customer's safe that is a that is great success for us um, Excellent. that is great success if it's just one patient we keep from calling that ambulance or it's one patient we keep from falling or hurting themselves we see that as a great success to the program excellent excellent I, I know you wanted to say a little bit about, and we got a couple minutes left, a little bit about Public Safety Day. Yep, Public Safety Day is going to be um, September um, 19th. Okay. Um, actually, Hay Days is going to be September 18th and 19th. And with um, Safety Day being, or Public Safety Day is going to be in conjunction with that on the 19th. I believe it's going to run from 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be at the, um, at the craft fair. Um, where the craft area is okay. off of Highway 279, Rogers Road 279 area. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, um, you know, come out with your family. It's going to be great. We're going to have um, all kinds of um, vendors out there as far as public safety goes. We'll have our FireWise display up. We'll be talking about that. There'll be a dunk tank. They'll have the fire, police, <laughs> emergency vehicles out there, stuff from the county. We'll have all kinds of stuff out there for kids to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they need to come out and listen to the music, enjoy, and have a good time. Excellent, excellent. Well, you know, the nice thing about attending one of those, if you just kind of stand over here on the side and watch the expressions that the kids have and even some of the parents who are made aware of things that they've either forgotten or mm. never knew about. That's right. There'll be a lots of things to do for the kids yes. and the parents yes. and everybody to get educated on public safety. And not only that is just, you know, take in the whole Hay Days event. They'll have the winter dog races on Saturday. It'll just be a lot of fun and enjoyment for the families, and you know, they need to come out and enjoy it with us. Excellent, excellent. Well, Steve, do you have anything you'd like to say in parting? We've got maybe 30 seconds. I would just like to say thank you to all the taxpayers and our customers out there for the, 
for um, what you provided to the fire and ambulance in the police department and, and all the public safety here in, in the city as well. Um, it's been great. We're moving forward and we look for many, many years to come with the city. Well, Steve, it's wonderful to have you with us today. We look forward to having you on a program in the future again. And if anybody has any questions about fire safety, give the fire department a call because they're always receptive. And if they don't have an answer, they'll guide you to someone who will have an answer. I'll try to help. Steve, yes, thank you very much for being here with us today. Yep. Thank and you, sir. And we want to thank you viewers for tuning us in.